Hi, this is Dr. Carol Francis. I'm coming to you from a very different location. I want to talk to you about optimism. There's so much research going on right now about optimism that really kind of suggests that maybe optimism is not the right attitude to have about life. But I'm here to challenge some of that research. In fact, Tali, um, let me just for a second give you the exact type of research. And actually, you can find out all this information on relationship success now and actually maybe on relationship success now and actually watching this. A really good researcher that came up with some fantastically interesting data using an examination of the brain and the way the brain actually functions. And her name was Tali Sharat, and she's from University College of London. It's a very interesting bit of research, but I think her conclusion is off. As she found out that people's brains when they were relatively optimistic, when they found out that their optimism was not necessarily statistically consistent with the probability of something bad happening in their life, that they were disinclined to adjust their point of view and be more realistic. And my take on this is that oh, I think the researchers misinterpreted the data. I think that what they needed to look at is that optimists tend to be oriented toward the survival of the fittest. So if you give them bad news, the chances are they're going to sift through that that bad news does not pertain to them because they're going to optimize their circumstances in order to make sure they fit in the other percentage, the more pleasant percentage. Here's a good example. For example, if be a, your, your girlfriend, your wife, or you were told that you have 25% chance, one out of every four women, to get breast cancer, would you automatically assume that you were one of those 25% and just decide to give yourself away to that depressing statistic? Or would you decide to be one of the 75% and change your diet, change your exercise, change everything you possibly could that was related to the possibility of you getting, getting cancer in the breast? Well, the chances are is most people who are optimistic would definitely say, I am going to determine that I'm going to be one of those 75%. So it's not that there is so much living in the denial of the possibility of something bad happening as they are orienting themselves towards something good happening. What we find out is that once you make this attachment to optimism, you are actually able to improve your health, face illnesses better than most people, recover faster, and also be able to go through surgeries with less complications, as well as be able to put off the possibility of having illness, either by putting it off longer than most people do, or just not ever getting it yourself. But there's so many other applications of optimism I find really interesting. I truly think optimism is a really important pill to swallow because well, let's just give you an example. Mothers and fathers face really complicated situations when they have to deal with their children. Now, place those parents in a situation where their children are diagnosed as Down syndrome at birth, autistic, usually around age three, or schizophrenic, often happening around the teenage years. They find out that mothers that are optimistic have a better rating of the relationship with their very difficult child to raise uh, if they're dispositionally optimistic, and that that was the only variable, the only item that consistently came up over and over again as being the difference between the parents feeling good about the relationship despite the very discouraging situation. Now think about that for a moment. Dispositional optimism gives people a better experience of life, even in a complicated situation. I could go on and on with this information. It's a fascinating field, but I think that's enough for today right now. Please look at RelationshipSuccessNow.com. There's a page specifically indicating that optimism in life and love because it will impact your relationship. You being able to cultivate, yes, and you can, cultivate your sense of optimism may actually help you in any number of ways. Now, how can you cultivate it? Let me just give you some secrets, although it's at the bottom of the page. Exercise vigorously, frequently throughout the week. Eat really good, healthy, natural foods. Or is any of this a surprise to you? Sleep is very important to refresh yourself and make yourself able to cope. Then you have laughter, running around, having a good time, having fun, not being irresponsible, but just remembering to cultivate that side of your brain. Looking at situations, there's, there's a whole idea about being able to Teach yourself to respond to situations in terms of problem solving. So if every situation, and we all have them, comes up to you and you feel like this is really bad, what am I going to do? If you shift into problem solving, chances are you're going to be more likely to be able to cultivate that sense of optimism. Well, there are more solutions at the bottom of the page, so I'll let you take a look. Take care and thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.